Hey folks, Dustin Zarni here, uh, Democratic Elections Commissioner. Welcome to Commissioner on the Train. And this time, I'm going to try to do this not on a Facebook Live, but actually a pre-recording uh, as I'm coming back from Albany tonight. Uh, and then I'll upload it when I get here. So, uh, this week's episode, I'm talking about uh, legislation, litigation, and absentee ballots. Um, let's start off with the absentee ballots. Uh, although that will go into the litigation. <laughs> so, absentee ballots are starting to go out. Uh, they're going to go out today, tomorrow, uh, for the June primary. So, if you are a Democrat anywhere in Onondaga County or a Republican in uh, Senate District 48, which is the southern part of Onondaga County, and you request an absentee ballot for the uh, June primary, then our ballots are going to be going out to you uh, in the next couple of days. They're going to be uh, sent from our vendor, Phoenix Graphics, who's helping us send out our initial run of about 2,500 to 3,000 ballots uh, that go out. These are our permanent absentees and people who have already requested early vote-by-mail ballots, uh, and those are going out through them, uh, it, the, why we've uh, decided to go ahead and do uh, this through our vendor instead of doing it ourselves is A, it's a lot of work to try to do it ourselves and we're seeing a lot more absentee ballots being used as a percentage of our, uh, our overall vote and so we're getting ready for the general election. Uh, but also, our vendor allows us to have uh, better tracking on these ballots. We have a tracking uh, that we can tell when a ballot is mailed to a voter, where it is in the mailing system. And when a voter mails it back to us, we can track it coming back as well. That's something that we can do inside of our office. So if you're wondering, if you sent out a ballot and you look at our website and you haven't received it back yet, we can, you can give us a call and we can track it and see where it is in the system. Um, that being said, uh, here's what has to happen with those absentee ballots. If you haven't requested it and you want to, you can go to onvote.net. Uh, that's our new website. Uh, it's been our old website, but that's an address for the old website. But it's uh, going to our new website, uh, Onondaga County. We designed our website with our help. Uh, I think it's a much sleeker look, but you can request an absentee ballot through the online portal up until uh, 15 days before the election. Um, and that will give you a guarantee that we're going to mail these out to you. So that's June 10th. Uh, after June 10th, if you request it, we will effort to send it out to you. But it doesn't necessarily mean uh, that you will get it in time. It's not a guarantee at that point. So if you're thinking about getting an absentee ballot, this is the time to go ahead and uh, you know, get that mailed out to you. And, uh, you know, go request it at onvote.net, and we will mail it out to you then. Uh, and, our, you know, now the vendor is sending out the first batch, but we'll be sending out the additional batches every day uh, as we go through the June primary. Uh, so we're working on that as well. Uh, so now uh, the absentee ballots are going out. But why does that lead into litigation, you may ask? Well, that's because uh, the we had two pieces of legislation or litigation that uh, had to do with absentee ballots uh, get some resolve uh, over this last week. Uh, first, let's deal with early voting by mail. Uh, that's the new procedure, which is allows you to request an absentee ballot without having, or it's actually a mail-in ballot, it's what it's called, it's not absentee anymore, uh, but a mail-in ballot that uh, you don't have to have an excuse. Anybody who wants to request it can request it. The difference is you can't uh, set yourself up to get it every year. You have to request it each year if you want it. Um, and uh, that was challenged in court by the uh, New York Senate, or New York GOP and the uh, Republican National Committee uh, to challenge uh, our ability in New York to do this. Now, the Supreme Court, which is the lowest court in New York, had already issued a ruling saying, no, uh, the legislature has plenty of authority to do to set up this new mail-in procedure, uh, and it's not against the New York Constitution. They appealed that to the court, uh, to the appellate court third division, and the appellate court third division came back uh, late last week on uh, a unanimous ruling saying that 
New York is in the right to send out absentee, or I'm sorry, early voting by mail ballots. Uh, so um, we are now, uh, they have now appealed that, but uh, now it goes to the Court of Appeals, which is the top court in the land. Um, and uh, however, the unanimous ruling at the uh, appellate uh, division, it's uh, looking pretty strong that uh New York will be able to retain this new method of, uh, of voting. Um, you, uh, you know, right now, even though it's in the courts, we are still proceeding with uh, early vote by mail. We did it for the presidential primary. We'll be doing it again for the June primary. Probably this summer sometime we'll get a ruling uh, that will affect the general election or not affect it. But in the meantime, to stay on any... Uh, action and uh, we you know and since all the courts have agreed that New York has this authority there's been no injunction and uh, we are proceeding as normal so that's uh, what's happening with that piece of legislation then another piece of the I'm sorry litigation (laughs) now another piece of litigation that is uh, uh, being uh, uh, that was decided late is what we call the Amador case and this has to do with uh, election law section 9209, uh, which is how we canvass absentee and now early vote by mail ballots in New York. In 2021, the legislature changed the way we do uh, absentee ballots at the time. We didn't have early vote by mail. Uh, and what that did was it re- removed uh, any ability of outside parties to come in and object to ballots. It allowed us to canvas those ballots as they came in. In fact, it required us to do it within four days of it as they come in so we could have uh, uh, election night results have uh, mail-in ballots like most of the country has. Uh, before that, uh, we would have to wait 14 days until after the election to even start counting uh, absentee ballots. And uh, that was led to a long amount of delay of declaring winners and races. It kind of made New York a laughing stock around the country. So uh, that changed, and uh, immediately, the uh, well, actually not immediately. <laughs> um, uh, once they put in the legislation, the, uh, the New York Republicans waited till literally the last minute in 2022 to try to sue to change this back. So we had two primaries in 2022 under this new standard of counting the, the uh, absentee ballots as they came in. And then before the general election, the New York GOP tried to sue to stop that. They wanted to be able to check the ballots. They didn't want to be able to have them as part of election night totals. And that case was thrown out because it was brought way too late for the court to actually resolve. Uh, There was a a Supreme Court ruling that stopped it, but it was immediately appealed, which put an automatic stay on the ruling. And then by the time the appellate court got to hear it, they pretty much said this has been brought too late. It's what uh, a legal concept called latches, where uh, it's too we're in the election now. They can't bring it, so they told them to bring it, uh, you know, next year. Uh, well, the New York GOP in its infinite wisdom once again waited until right before the general election in 2023 to bring uh, the suit again. They allowed a Uh, another primary to go by in 2023. So now we've had three primaries and one general election under this new law, which allowed us to count absentee ballots and have it as part of our election night results. Um, And uh, the court um, got this case right before the general election. And uh, the New York GOP and its lawyers admitted that it was too close to the general election for a ruling there. They wanted a ruling for 2024. So uh, we had the 2023 general election go by with this ruling uh, being held, and we still were able to count absentee ballots before the election day. And then, then uh, a funny thing happened. Uh, the uh, New York GOP did a little forum shopping here, where they went to Saratoga County to get uh, judges that were more sympathetic to their point. And uh, one of the judges. Uh, who was assigned the case. They actually went to a couple of different judges. Who, uh, turned, one judge had too many ties to the local Republican committee, so he had to recuse himself. 
And then a second judge um, was on the case, and her law clerk was overheard at a Republican County Committee meeting uh, bragging that the judge was going to rule against the case, he was going to rule it against it, just like the previous judge did, uh, and uh, they would be able to uh, stop this absentee ballot. Well, because of that, uh, the second judge had to recuse herself in the case, and the law clerk had to resign <laughs> because of his uh, talking out of uh, court. You can't talk. If you're uh, a court officer, you can't talk about court matters in a, a political uh, um in a political setting. So, um, and then it got assigned to a third judge, and it's been sitting there for quite some time. Again, another prim- two primaries, or well, one primary, the presidential primary, and a second primary is on the horizon going by with this new process. Well, that judge finally came out with a ruling. And in kind of a surprising term of events, that ruling basically put into place all of the procedures that we've been doing. Uh, We still will count absentees as they come in and early vote by mail ballots. We still will not allow objections from the outside. Um, However, what the court uh, did state is in a narrow ruling said that uh, individual election commissioners uh, may object to the ballots. Before, it was uh, if a commissioner disagreed with another commissioner or whether a ballot counted, the ballot automatically counted. Now, uh, in this narrow ruling, they're saying that both commissioners have to agree to count a ballot, and if both commissioners disagree to count a ballot, then it doesn't count. But there's this weird third area, so what happens if the commissioners split? And it said, well, it can't be counted, and it has to be part of a uh, court-supervised count um, after the election. Um, so that ruling is still being appealed. Uh, so the New York uh, appealed that ruling, even though 90% of the ruling was for uh, New York. They are appealing that ruling because of this narrow ruling that the, uh, the judge put in there. And uh, so for this primary that's coming up, we're going to proceed as normal. We're going to uh, have the same things that were in place for the presidential primary, for the three primaries over the last two years and two general elections over the last two years uh, that allowed us to have absentee ballot totals on election night um, without any outside interference and without any ability of individual elections commissioners um, to stop uh, the counting of ballots. So that's going for it. Um, and it's going to go to the uh, appellate division and I'm sure it'll go to the appeals court at some point as well. And there's a stay in place saying that the original ruling is not in place. Again, I assume sometime this summer we'll get some definitive uh, on that as well before the general election. But so those two pieces of uh, litigation came out really late last week. So I'm glad I was able to get that in this commissioner on the train <laughs> um, uh, you know, podcast. Uh, and so then the third piece of uh, podcast I wanted to talk about was uh, legislation. Uh, and that's because, as you can see, I'm on my way back from Albany and uh, the, one of Amtrak's finest cars. <laughs> but uh, uh, I, again, I'm going up to Albany about once a week over the next, over the last week, this week, and next week. And uh, I'm going there to try to push final uh, legislation to help boards of elections throughout New York State. Uh, this is something I kind of do on my own dime. I, I pay for my own ticket. Out of Dog County doesn't pay for it. Um, it's part of my official duty, so it is uh, counts as a work day. But uh, you know, I don't get paid by the hour, so uh, <laughs> you know, or overtime or anything like that. So uh, I you know, usually travel up 7 a.m. on the 7 a.m. train, get to Albany around 10 o'clock, do meetings from 10 to 3:30, and then get on the four o'clock train back home. It's a long day, but it's worth it. Uh, I had a, I had eh, about 10 meetings today, uh, six of them with assembly members, uh, and I posted a photo about that. And the reason I'm going is because there are several pieces of legislation that have passed the New York Senate that have not passed the New York Assembly. In fact, the Assembly has not had uh, a, a full elections committee hearing yet. They're going to do one before the end of session. The session ends in the middle of June, actually the beginning of June. 
and uh, that's the last chance for us to get votes on bills. And uh, in the assembly, the elections law committee will have to vote and pass it, and then it goes to the full assembly uh, for us for any hope for some of these bills to become law before um, the end of this year. So uh, we're pushing uh, both the Democrat and Republican caucus of commissioners, as well as coalitions like Let New York Vote and Reinvent Albany. We're pushing uh, several BOE reform bills that will ensure that all commissioners are full time. Uh, ensure that there's a minimum staffing level for boards of elections and also uh, ensure that uh, uh, that uh, all commissioners have four-year terms so they can go from presidential to presidential. Uh, but uh, these are very important reforms because what this does is that this ensures that the independence of all boards of elections continue to be so nobody can cut our budget. Uh, we have a budget based on the number of voters that are in our county is our minimum number of staffers uh, that all commissioners are full-time. It's a full-time job. Uh, we now have a full 12-month political calendar, uh, so we need a full-time uh, commissioners. Also, it keeps county legislators from threatening to make it part-time uh, or cut staff as well if, you, if those two pieces of legislation are passed. And then the four-year term is important for institutional knowledge. Uh, we have four years of an election cycle and you really want an elections commissioner to not be starting new in a presidential year. So if that is passed, uh, then starting in January, the elections commissioners will be four years uh, statewide. Now, these uh, pieces of legislation really deal with some counties that are uh, a little bit behind the times. Uh, in fact, it's a minority of counties in every one of them. The minimum staffing affects nine counties. The um, full-time commissioner affects 12 counties and the two-year term affects 22 counties. That's out of 62 counties. So uh, it's a, um, a, 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 you know, it's not, it's not affecting all of New York State, but what it does is it provides protection to all of the counties in New York State. That's why we feel it's very important. That's why the Republican caucus of commissioners feel it's very important. And it's why quite it, good government groups like Reinvent Albany and Let New York Vote think it's very important. And we're hoping some other groups will weigh in over the next three weeks to get this done. So um, I'm sure you'll hear about this a little bit more each time because uh, next Tuesday I'm going to Albany again, so I'll do another one of these, uh, Commissioner on a Train, uh, and uh, on, on the way back from Albany um, before it gets too late in the day. Uh, so um, uh, you'll hear about this, and we'll see if they get passed by the beginning of June. Uh, if you want these things passed, contact your local assembly person. Uh, no matter where you are in the state, because they're the ones who are going to uh, decide since the New York Senate has passed two of the three of these bills, and the third one hopefully will be passed next week. So that's uh, you can go to my website, DustinZarney.com. You can see all our legislative priorities. We have about a three-week push to get this done. So <clears throat> that's all I got today, uh, this week. <coughs> a weekly walk, I did uh, SD50. Uh, this New York Senate District 50, uh, and uh, it's uh, quite a little bit of a play. <coughs> a few people have uh, shared it around to their political lists, so uh, a lot of people are reading it, so check that out. Uh, <coughs> next weekend, I'll do Senate District 48, uh, which is the Rachel May District. Uh, this Friday, Zoom with Zarni, I'll be talking to Ben Weinberg of the Citizen Union. Uh, he is the champion of even year legislation, uh, and a new amendment was uh, produced this week to move cities and uh, judicial uh, races starting in 2030 <coughs> to even year. <coughs> Sorry, <coughs> a little dry here on the train, so I'm going to wrap this up. So check that out on Friday. As always, go to DustinZarney.com. And, and you can subscribe um, and get uh, email notifications anytime that uh, I, I post any content or lectures. All right. Bye-bye.